Hi, so I heard I'm crazy. <laughs> and I'm proud of it, so that was not my speech. But uh, I just wanted to give you a short overview of my um, crazy life and uh, what I see for the future of Charlottesville, which is crazy again. Um, I, I uh, grew up uh, in Germany um, after World War II uh, and in a kind of a dysfunctional family. Uh, decided at eight years I wanted to be um, an entrepreneur. Started my normal jobs, what you do as children, uh, including the most important thing to get successful, a paper road. And uh, started, uh, started to actually buy art when I was 15. Um, Art Nouveau was out of favor. I could afford it and have a great collection today. Uh, and I actually did it on a layaway, which I introduced uh, to art dealers in uh, Munich, Germany. Um, I started in financials, uh, read uh, financial things, found that uh, beer brewing is an interesting thing. What's here now, all these many breweries, uh, they were in Munich. Uh, they had brewery and a real estate business, and that was not valued in the balance sheet, so I bought it for no money, uh, but they paid no dividends, so I went to management and I said, well, we have annual meetings and we should serve the beer and the product, and we got the pro uh, that done, and uh, so I went to these, uh, uh, all these different companies at one share at $40, and drank for $20 beer, and so I had a 50% dividend, tax-free. <laughs> um, I want to talk about uh, breaking the rules. You know, you hear in this wonderful festival so much about innovation and these great companies, and I'm coming from the back door. What is it? Breaking the rules is really what all does it. And we have uh, in technology, uh, which happens all the time, new technologies, there are no rules, but if you go into all the other normal things, um, there are rules, that uh, don't allow us to do things. So, um, when it comes to one of my uh, dear heart projects is city development, what is the city in the future? Think ahead uh, uh, 5, 10, 20, 30 years. Um, we um, have to understand that uh, change is happening. Uh, we have to get in front of it uh, we, need, we need the courage for innovation. Uh, we, think out, we have to think out of the box and uh, we have to be willing to break, break the rules. Uh, I have some uh, things about famous people who said it. One of my most favorite uh, person, which we all love here, is Thomas Jefferson. He broke the rules. Uh, he um, made this famous quote. Uh, he did the Louisiana uh, Purchase. Uh, broke the rules, uh, uh, um, um, I'm looking at my time, sorry. Uh, <laughs> uh, he did advances in farming and then the most crazy thing that you can do, build a university in the middle of the boondocks, not in some of the big cities. Uh, if we would build a, a somewhere between here and North Carolina University, everybody would seem crazy. He had the vision and we heard how important it is. Um, on top of it, he had to move half the mountain to build the lawn. So uh, uh, I think I'm in, in good company doing about these crazy things. Uh, I just want to show you a short thing. Uh, one of my first projects in the 60s that I got involved, we were uh, revolutionaries, socialists, and all the names that you have now for the crazy people. We did that. And, uh, but we had some good ideas and we sort out the box. So we took uh, uh, Munich and realized that traffic is tilling, uh, killing downtown. Um, we proposed to the city to uh, close the four main ta uh, uh, crossroads, would be here in Charlottesville, 250 and 29 in the center. Uh, we were crazy. We convinced the mayor, who then uh, had his political campaign and said, if I build more roads, more cars will come. Uh, today it's a town uh, that's a little bigger, Charlottesville, that has um, 250,000 or 240,000 active uh, bike riders, and the downtown is uh, car-free, uh, 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 pollution-free. Um, I was involved in developing one of the largest products downtown. Uh, you see here the uh, 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 city 
square, the main square, uh, which is car free. All the roads uh, you see here, things where now people sit and walk and, and are, are uh, carless uh, environments that are uh, very, very attractive. Um, I want to show the uh, uh, next thing. If you see this large project with goes to there, it's like the size of Rockefeller Center in Munich, but we fit it into uh, uh, the facade, uh, which you see over here. Uh, this is one of the uh, uh, historic, um, uh, one of the most historic uh, churches. And then we had this huge project going all the way uh, to seven, and then s uh, divided up facades. And so you can build huge pro uh, projects downtown with high density, but it blends in. And that's something we're thinking for Charlottesville too. Um, uh, I think the uh, uh, next thing we went by accident, but I was a communist in my early days uh, before. <laughs> uh, so I, I was in Czech Republic um, uh, in 1962 and uh, trying to study the communist system. And so uh, I knew about it. So we went to Prague uh, after the change uh, and you could pick up everything uh, on a credit card, like it was in the downtown mall in Charlottesville. But we went again, uh, new, new ideas. Uh, we uh, planted uh, uh, art mushrooms uh, on the public streets illegally, but people liked it. And then uh, we had to remove it. We had some friends and uh, uh, things they said they tied themselves uh, with uh, welded things. To think. When the city wanted to come and to tear it away, they walked away. Uh, years later, they're still there. Uh, it became an icon. Now it, all the tourist bus, uh, buses stop there. And then we uh, basically took a concept uh, about community, about um, uh, getting different so, uh, parts of society together. So uh, uh, there's 1,700 hotels in Prague, and we wanted to have something that's different. Uh, so we see, you see, <coughs> there's a hostel on the first floor, and then you go up, and each floor, it goes up in quality. Uh, there's two penthouse levels there, so we're starting at $10 a night, uh, and <clears throat> $350 for the penthouse. So all people from all different pocketbooks uh, can live together. Uh, it works wonderful. The quality is the same, same mattresses, same things from then. The community gets together. We have amazing events there, and all people live together. They love it. Uh, and uh, it works, uh, even though everybody told us it cannot work. Um, the um, next step was it worked, so we put more crazy mushrooms, odd mushrooms, on the top terraces. And then uh, one day we uh, said, well, we want to have flying art. So uh, you saw in this picture, so we had uh, uh, sculptures, and uh, we used the uh, electric lines, and we used uh, the uh, cables for, for the street lights, and uh, uh, we went to the, the community and, and said, can we do it? And they said, you're crazy, but we showed them some, and then it's again, it's there today, it works. Uh, we have uh, then insects flying on the walls of our house, and, uh, um, but actually they're very helpful, so. Um, <laughs> uh, just a short thing, uh, we are 100% uh, carbon Imp uh, zero, 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 zero percent uh, carbon imprint in the hotel. Um, we have many first uh, in Europe, many first uh, um, uh, in the world. Um, one of them is that we took the air condition and put them in the basement. And then the heat from the air conditioning heats up uh, the warm water. Uh, now we have uh, uh, noise-free roof terraces, all the back rooms can be used, and we have a beer garden there and other things that people can use and don't have the noise of the uh, air conditioning. Technically impossible, but it works now for five years. Um, uh, and then uh, just uh, when I came to Charlottesville, one of my first things was I heard the Paramount Theater is dilapidated, it has to be torn down, and I think it looked like um, should be torn down, but uh, I thought maybe not. Um, and uh, so, uh, <laughs> now, well, I run a little over time, but I, I share a story with it. So uh, I didn't have all the money. 
I didn't have all the money together, so I went to my banker, and uh, who sits right down on High Street, and they said, I went to buy the Paramount, and uh, he said, are you crazy? <laughs> I said, yeah, I am, but I, uh, if you swear by your grandchildren that you won't tell anybody, I'm not buying the Paramount, and uh, we went in this thing, but now here this is lit. We have one spotlight in here, rats were running around, water was dripping from the ceiling, and I had the flashlight, and I showed him this chandelier and that chandelier. And I said, that's an uh, art deco chandelier, brass handmade, and each one is worth $100,000. So I'm paying $2,000, I'm just buying the chandeliers, and he gave me the loan. <laughs> 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 so, um, uh, we, we, we had all kind of ideas and we worked with governments and everything and, and uh, uh, finally found a, um, um, a program that uh, we started uh, to develop ideas, uh, put it into a non-profit organization which is run by these wonderful people here that host us. And uh, uh, so we cut it done and um, the idea was really um, how do you re redevelop and how do you get activity into the town? Uh, the, the mall, uh, the city had really a lot of courage. Um, sorry, I'm off track. Uh, um, the, the, we did it, it went into a, a foundation and uh, it's very successful. Um, the the uh, uh, building next door, if you uh, uh, look at that, it was uh, burned down. Uh, it was dilapidated for about uh, 10 some years. Then the owners of the property decided uh, they don't want to pay the real estate taxes anymore, abandoned it, the city took it over. And I said, well, you know, this is dilapidated. I think we can do something out of it. Uh, we uh, did the central place, which now is the center of the downtown mall uh, with the outside seating. and. Uh, but uh, how do you do that? Outside seating was not allowed. There was an ordinance, uh, no outside seating. For if you put more outside seating, uh, more uh, uh, homeless people come there and it will be bad for the mall. Uh, we studied it. We said uh, the model for the mall is uh, entertainment and food and how we do that. So we, tried to, we talked to the city and... Uh, uh, told them we need outside seating. Uh, it took us nine months to convince them. Uh, at the last uh, meeting with the city council, they said nobody will sit outside uh, in summer, it's too hot. Nobody will sit outside in uh, winter, it's too cold. And I said, deal, we do it only in spring and fall. And they voted for it. And I think <laughs> you see now. <laughs> uh, and and, and it's, 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 the, it's the core of the activity, what we have here. So. Um, I fell in love with Salzville, I moved here, uh, we live here, and sure enough, lo and behold, there is this uh, rundown factory two blocks from here, nobody wants it, it's horrible, it has pollution, has all kind of everything, what's bad, don't touch it, it's very bad. And I sat on it, and I sat on it, and I said, you know, it's, it's this hole, and this rundown, it's crime, you see, and everything, but I think people like to be in the Green Valley. So? Very, very, uh, very sophisticated idea. Um, we had scientists study all of this, but it's basically the idea, make a green valley. Uh, uh, and, and, and as the mall was full now, so families couldn't really be on the mall anymore. For they, you either be in a restaurant and have to eat something and pay a lot of money. So uh, we created a community space, a piazza. And you all go to Europe, you like the piazzas. We have the piazza, uh, we have uh, last year 120 events uh, from non-profits and everything. And uh, um, uh, you see there we have our logo, uh, Dream Big, and it works. Uh, uh, the second part, what was the need for uh, uh, things, it looked like this. Uh, and then we did this, uh, a park. Uh, I stole the idea from uh, New York in 1870, they planned Central Park. And I said, not a bad idea, let's do it here. So we have a park, people can sit here and, and, and live and, and enjoy it. And uh, so uh, my thing, and I understand there's a lot of young people here, is one, um, 
I think the next step that we all should understand and work on is where is Charlottesville in the next uh, 10 or 20 years? Uh, I see it, it's a car-free, uh, pedestrian downtown. I think we all will learn that instead of driving f two and three and five blocks, we will walk. Uh, it works. Everybody likes to do exercise. Some have to go to ACAC for an hour. But we can do it all day uh, in the thing, and it works. Uh, I have seen it in other towns, and we have worked in many different things. Um, it will be livable town. Uh, the second thing is we have to uh, do intelligent density, which I showed you before. It can work. It will be wonderful. And, and I'm not talking like Tom, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> I know it, and, and, and it will happen. Um, so what, what uh, my message is uh, for the younger people here, Breaking rules is important, for that is the innovation. For if we wouldn't have broken rules, all kind of different things, we wouldn't have all this wonderful thing that happened here. Um, decide where you want to go and stay with this. And uh, we will continue to do the things here in Charles, what we have done in the past. Uh, if it doesn't go right, go left. <laughs> uh, <coughs> Uh, be open to change, and I know change is uh, 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 difficult, and there are certain community members who got hurt in the past, and they're afraid of change. We will do change, and include everybody, and then come back. Just let's dream big, and it can happen.